And procrastination promotes like this cramming, get it all done at once, and then you can't remember anything the next day when you're at school and you go to, you go to take the test. You, re you remember nothing. And that's because the neural pathways in your brain don't have time to solidify. So if you do cramming, if you procrastinate, you cram all this knowledge together. It's like building a house with like Elmer's glue versus building a house with concrete. That's a process that takes longer. You gotta lay out the concrete, you gotta let it dry, you gotta let it solidify, you gotta let the, the knowledge sink in. What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Shout out to Coursera for sponsoring today's video. Appreciate you guys for supporting the channel, keeping the lights on. If you guys don't know what Coursera is, which I'm sure most of you guys know what Coursera, Coursera is, uh, basically they partner with all of uh, the top universities and then they present courses online for you to take. Um, they offer them for free and they offer them paid. If you do the paid version, you get the certificate and you get like graded homework and there's more accountability to it. And then they also have master's degrees. If you want to take certain Coursera courses, you can use those classes towards college credit. They have like 3,000. They have a lot of courses to choose from. They have like 3,000 courses. Um, they told me to pick two, so I picked two. I'm doing machine learning and then today's video, which is learn how to learn. Um, the two classes that I'm taking do vary in price, but I still think it's pretty affordable. Like compared to the, the, the cost of like an actual college class versus what you get at Coursera, I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty affordable. So the two classes that I'm actually taking, today's video is Learn How to Learn, which is from McMaster University, University of California, San Diego, and then the other one that I'm taking is from Stanford University, Machine Learning. So, so I'll put the link for the actual course that I'm taking in the description, and I'll also pin it as a comment so you guys can check it out, and uh, I'll do the same thing for the Machine Learning one, which I'm going to be releasing in a couple days. I'll also link to the main Coursera website so you guys can go check out other topics if you want. So let's talk about learning to learn. Uh, and I'll just be upfront and honest about it. I thought it was going to be a little bit cheesy and I, you know, a little bit cliche of like, you know, make a list and, you know, don't procrastinate. And it does talk about procrastination, but not anywhere near in the way that I thought it was going to talk about procrastination. In fact, I think that this video actually pairs well with my video yesterday where I was talking about why I wanted to quit co boot camp and some things that you could actually do while you're there, like actual memory techniques, actionable things that you can walk away from this video so that you can learn code and just remember things better. The first thing that this course started talking about was two different focus modes, that you have a focus mode and then you have a diffused mode. Focus mode is when your brain is thinking about things that it's already familiar with. So when you're tackling a problem with JavaScript and you have a little bit of experience with JavaScript, your brain is trying to reach on to the knowledge about JavaScript that it already has. So focus mode is typically when you're like in the zone, in the moment, using knowledge you already have to tackle the problem and you kind of know how to get from A to B. And then you have diffuse mode, which is really popular for artists, people that get into, into creativity, into creative, endeavors, rappers, people in music, uh, creative endeavors where you kind of just have to try something different, try something new. That's when your brain is more relaxed in diffusal mode. And this is why a lot of people talk about meditation and when you're meditating you just, you get all these creative inspirations. That's because your brain's not thinking and your brain is more open to connecting to different types of, you know, unrelated thoughts and you have these moments of serendipity. If you don't know what serendipity is, it's when you're in the shower and all of a sudden you have this like life-changing application idea and you're like, oh, I should build that. I could be a millionaire. It's like, you know, it's really good ideas, really creative ideas. Like, oh, I should try that. Now this course does mention procrastination, um, not just because procrastination is bad, you know, get, get the work done, but because your brain is affected by the, ha not having enough time to learn what you need to learn. Your brain can solidify the knowledge more if you study consistently and learn it again every day. You, you learn a little bit today, you learn a little bit tomorrow, so you end up reviewing what you did yesterday rather than just cramming. And procrastination promotes like this cramming, get it all done at once, and then you can't remember anything the next day when you're at school and you go to, you go to take the test. You, re you remember nothing. And that's because the neural pathways in your brain don't have time to solidify. So if you do cramming, if you procrastinate, you cram all this knowledge together. It's like building a house with like Elmer's glue versus building a house with concrete. That's a process that takes longer. You gotta lay out the concrete, you gotta let it dry, you gotta let it solidify, you gotta let the, the knowledge sink in. Um, versus cramming, it's just like, just putting it all together and it's just like all, you know, misshapen and, and you don't remember anything, it does, it does no good. So they do talk a little bit about time management. 
The main thing that they talk about in this course is the Pomodoro Technique. If you don't know what the Pomodoro Technique is, it's where you work for 25 minutes and you take a 5 minute break. You do that 3 times for 5 minute breaks and then on the 4th time you take a 15 minute break. And so you try to set a number of Pomodoros that you want to do during the day. There were a lot of resources in the course that they gave me that were actually like, you know, pretty good reading. There was this one that's like, how to remember, or this 30 second trick where you can remember anything. And then I started reading it and it was like, after you study something, whenever you're done with that study session, spend 30 seconds and write down everything that resonated with you. If you wait a few hours, you're going to remember some of the facts, but you're not going to remember any of the nuances of it and why you chose to remember those things. It's going to be different for each person, but that was a cool little trick. I was like, I've never done it, you know, directly. I've always kept notes during the class, but I never, like, right after class, always write something down. I kind of do that with when I'm when I'm reading books. If ever I, I get done reading a book, whenever I get done reading a chapter in a book, I always note down things in that chapter that resonated with me. It also talked about different learning styles. So there was this one learning style that is pretty traditional called blocking learning style. Blocking learning style is where you have one topic, you complete this topic, and then you have another topic and then you have another topic and you complete those topics in that order whereas th there is like this new way of doing it um, called interleaving and that's where you would do a piece from A, a piece from B, and a piece from C A, B, C, A, B, C, whereas the first one blocking would be three A's, three B's, and three C's so just section each task out by itself and interleaving is kind of new but the, the research behind it actually shows that it promotes longer lasting learning and, and, and just more memory of it overall. A little bit of psychology in there, just like some fun reading. There was one that's like, how to get a song that's stuck in your head from not being stuck in your head, and that's to remember how the end of the song goes. And I was like, wow, I've never actually tried that. Songs have been stuck in my head forever, but if I just remember the end of the song, then they, that's it. That's it. You're, this song is done. It's over. Kind of to touch on yesterday's topic when I was saying the process needs to be the reward, not the reward. That's almost exactly what they talked about here. Except they called it process over product. The product is the end result, but the process is is where the progress happens. It's where the learning happens. You want to stay focused on the process and, and not the outcome, not the reward. They gave an example talking about like a surfer. A surfer is focused on surfing the wave, not getting back to shore and being like, yo, did you see that? Look at that huge accomplishment I just did about being in the process and in the moment. I couldn't really articulate that yesterday in my video, but when I saw that analogy, I was like, a dancer that's dancing, they're focused on the dance. That is that is the point of it, is to dance, not to be done with it and then be like, yeah, did you see that dance? It was good. And so things like that, like just really investing in the process rather than the product. And then they started explaining how the Pomodoro technique can help you do that. Doing a few Pomodoros, a few like uh, three to four, it takes a little bit to get going and then you, you get to like your fourth Pomodoro and now your brain starts to hit this what's known as flow state. I've read a book about flow and flow is defined as when the ability meets the challenge and that is when you are in peak flow state. Um, and then when you're not in flow state, when you're having to struggle bust it, that's when the challenge exceeds your current ability and then there's this gap you have to close which is the learning gap, which can be uncomfortable. It can be a little bit frustrating. They started talking about knowledge collapse. I was like, what is knowledge collapse? And then they were like, knowledge collapse is when you learn a topic and that you think you know the topic. And then a few minutes later, you're like, wait, no, I just, I thought I understood that, but wait, hold on. It doesn't make any sense anymore. But you just said, and like, you'll be like, oh, okay, I got it figured out. And then the next day you're like, but wait, that doesn't make any sense. That's actually your subconscious rearranging everything and it's a totally natural phenomenon it doesn't mean that there's like anything wrong with you but they also started talking about detecting signs of procrastination and when you feel procrastination your brain's pain signals turn on it doesn't feel like nervous system pain like someone's pinching you it doesn't it's not like that sort of pain but to your brain it's the same amount of pain and so you want to go somewhere else and do something different to relieve that pain and you know, uncomfortableness is just because that's our nat natural tendency to do that. And I was like, hmm, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And so they broke it down into like these four steps. You know, what, what is the cue that prompts you for this? And so that could either be location, time, how you feel, or your reaction to something, just a, a distraction or something like that. Um, and then you have a routine of what you do when you start to get into this procrastination mode. You start to, have you ever noticed 
Have you ever noticed when you really need to get something done, somehow your whole house ends up clean? Like, that's the routine that you fall into when you get, like, when you procrastinate. Oh, I got a whole page paper tomorrow? Suddenly my dishes are done, trash is taken out, floors have been mopped, first time in like a year. You know, like, everything is clean. That's because things are not aligning in your brain. Your brain needs to get something done. That's what that feeling of, oh, I know I have to get this done. And so you still feel like you need to take action, but you just don't want to do that thing because the pain signals are on in your brain. So you end up doing something else so that there's like a, a misalignment there. And in order to do that, you have to make a plan. You have to be able to detect yourself going into this routine. And we're all pretty self-aware of that. At least I am. I know when I'm procrastinating. I know when I need to get things done and I'm not doing it. But I need to make a plan in order to change that. I need to be able to detect it and then plan out what I'm going to do differently. Okay, I know. I, I know. I, you know what? I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to do the work. But what's going to drive me to do that work? Well, that is when you implement some sort of reward for yourself, whether that's if you get all your work done in X amount of time, then reward yourself with a night of mindless surfing the internet or playing some games or, um, you know, just you know, keep it in moderation, but you need to have the carrot on a stick. That's just, we're just humans. That's just how we work. And then obviously you need to have a belief in yourself that you can complete this task and you can get over this wall and you can learn this difficult subject. And in order to do that, um, there's a pretty pretty common phrase, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Jim Rohn said that, and uh, that's why I created the Discord. There were a couple recommendations that they had for the class. One of them was uh, planning your day the night before, which I normally sit down in the morning and plan my day. So I'm thinking about implementing this one into my life. And then the second one was work on the most difficult task of the day first. So get that out of the way. There's actually a book called The One Thing. What is your one thing that you should be working on right now that would have the biggest effect? I've made a whole video about this before. There's basically a lot of things during the day that you can choose or not choose to work on, but usually there's only a few of those things that have the biggest effect on your life, the biggest outcome. So pick the one thing that would give you 80% of the results of something you need that day. So you do this one thing, you complete this code test that you want to do for like a job, so to speak. That's the one thing you got to do. That's like, that's going to get you that job. That's like the most important thing. That could, that's like 80% of all you got to do that day. And the other 20% is just study up, read up, look for some other jobs. Like that's it. And so you need to find those huge things that have a lot, a lot of weight, a lot of value riding on them. I need to pick those things. You need to do it. So they recommend working on the most difficult task first. They did give a couple of like uh, ways to, to, to memorize things. They gave this one thing called a memory palace, and this has been studied very well. People could remember almost 95% of a list of 60 items by using this method. And so what is this method? It's basically you picture somewhere, let's say your house, for example, somewhere you could walk through with your eyes closed. And you imagine the things that you're trying to remember just laid around your house in a, in a memorable way. So if you're trying to remember, let's say like, an array method for JavaScript, uh, like dot .push, and you want to remember what that does. You would walk into your kitchen, and you would see a line of eggs, and you'd see a new egg being pushed into the line of eggs, and you're like, oh, that's the dot .push method over there. And it was using more of these visualization techniques to memorize new things, and to attach those new things onto things that are already familiar with your brain, which is what they kind of teach you to do in school. Uh, there's, there's the, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which is what you can remember how to do the order of operations for math. So the reason that they say this, at least in the Coursera course, is because a while back people were very visual. When we were hunters and gatherers and we were walking around, we needed to remember the places that we came and went from and how we could get back home to, you know, we go out hunt, take the food back, and we need to remember how to do that. And so that is how we are wired is, is what they say. It's easy to remember things that aren't abstract. You can picture a cow in a field, or when you think of a cow, you can picture a cow in a field. It's easy to remember non-abstract things, and then you have words like zest and love and things like that. Yeah, those are abstract words, but they're tangible because they're related to emotion, so you can feel them. So you can feel those emotions, and so they seem real. But things like a slash and a semicolon and parentheses and what an array looks like. Those are all abstract concepts. And so in order to solidify those, you want to attach those to memories or things that you know in your brain really well. In this case, your house, because you walk around it all the time. And that's called the memory palace technique. And 
People actually use this technique to count cards. I read that in uh, Cal Newport's Deep Work. Finally, there are these really cool topics. Uh, the rest of these topics were actually really cool. I was really thoroughly impressed with this course. Um, it talks about long-term memory and short-term memory, but they just called it working memory. Working memory is when you have a few different things kind of jumbled around in your head when you're trying to learn something new. You're trying to learn a new coding language. You have a little bit of syntax over here, a little bit of, okay, what was the process that this loop is doing? How does that actually work? And you're remembering that over here and you're remembering, you know, generally you're, you can hold about four things in your working memory after it has time to solidify, um, you know, by daily consistent work investing in the process. The working slots when you go to recall how to do something rather than recalling and filling all four working slots that you need to be able to complete this task maybe it fills one or two slots and the other ones are coming from long-term memory because they've solidified and gone to the long-term memory storage and so as you're learning a skill you start off just at like full cpu 100 percent cpu used i'm sure you guys open the task manager and seen that and then as time goes on it starts to use maybe like you know 50 25 percent cpu to to come back to to use a skill. Last but not least, there was this word called Einstellung, which meant when your brain is so focused, it doesn't want to give up one of the four working slots that your brain has. And if you have a lack of focus or people that are prone to ADHD, sometimes I feel like this, uh, if you look at my YouTube, I'm always having wild ideas. Just ideas come in and out all day long, and but I have a difficult time focusing on stuff at the same time, but I always have these ideas. And it's funny because people that are more focused usually are less creative. And I didn't know that was actually, there was like an actual word for that. And I do feel creative most of the time if I'm not super focused on something. And I was like, hmm, well, I do feel unfocused most of the time and it's really difficult for me to, but at the same time I'm having all these ideas. So my brain has this tendency to just grab something and let it go, grab something and let it go, grab something. So I have like, these interactions of my the, the pizzas of my brain that are just really unrelated and I don't know I just thought that was I just thought that was cool it really kind of stuck with me at least different things would resonate with you but to me I, I learned like a whole lot I was really impressed with this course I really enjoyed the teachers I watched the videos the little reading materials that they gave us were really awesome Everything about this course was just really impressive. I kept running out to my girlfriend to be like, hey, did you know that your brain does X, Y, and Z? She's like, wow, really? Yeah, that makes, yeah, that makes total sense. And I was like, yeah, I know, right? And then I come back in and read some more. And uh, maybe, maybe you have to be passionate about like understanding how your mind works. And uh, I'm in a creative space. And so people talk about writer's block and creativity block. And aren't you afraid you're going to run out of ideas? No, I have ideas all day long, but I struggle with executing on them because I can't. Focus. And the great creatives have developed a skill to just be able to let go of everything and let the the muse, the inspiration just kind of come to them. That solution right before you're about to fall asleep at night, been working on Coda all day long, got stuck on a bug, can't figure it out, and then you start to pass out, you're not thinking about anything, you're just kind of like, whatever, zombie mode, boom. Solution pops in your brain. like, And now you can kind of understand how that's all working. So you're freeing up your working mind, there's meditation, and you know, just, just really overall awesome course. I learned a lot. I have a whole lot of notes. Um, I'll probably link those notes down there in the description too if you guys are interested, but I recommend that you take it. And I read a lot of books and this was just very kind of connected the dots from a lot of the books that I did. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys can take away something from this and understand why people procrastinate and why it's bad. Not just because you're not getting the work done, but because it's literally a lack of time for your brain to solidify the information that you need. Uh, your, your, your brain needs time to solidify, and there's nothing you can do about that. That's just the unchangeable fact. Um, and then, you know, the plan to lay it all out. It was, it was a really good course, guys. And so, I definitely recommend, if anything, just check it out. Link for it is in the description. I was super hyped by it. Uh, we have Discord if you want to talk to me, ask me some questions. And if you like this video, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.